Hi, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about focus stacking. Focus stacking is a technique where you're working with a series of images that have a fairly shallow depth of field and you combine them to show one image that has a greater area of overall focus than if you had just used one image or one of those images from this series. Now this is a technique that works exceptionally well if you are shooting with a tripod and are using a still subject. However, it also works pretty darn well. If you are hand holding your camera and you have a little bit of different movements and you have some movements as you're shooting, but also for this particular series I'm showing you an extreme example. I was hand holding my camera using a wide open macro lens, 180 millimeter, and it was a breezy day so the flower was moving as well. It works pretty well as you'll see and uh, it's, it's a fairly simple technique. First thing you want to do is make sure that all of your images that you're going to use are similarly exposed and have very similar color throughout and so you can see flowers moving around quite a bit in the series here but overall the color is pretty similar the exposure is similar and so we can go ahead and um, bring these into Photoshop so click on the last in the series or the first and then shift click on the rest and then right click edit in and do open as layers in Photoshop okay so I fast forwarded while Photoshop opens all of these images as new layers Depending on the number of images and your file size, this can take a little while. So just wait and be patient until it stops processing. And as we go through, you can see again that they're kind of all over the place. And so the next step that we want to do is make sure that these are all aligned. And so we want to make sure all of our layers are selected. So shift click, make sure they're all selected here and do edit and then do auto align layers. For focus stacking, a vignette removal is probably not that useful, as is uh, geometric dispersion, distortion depending on your image. If you have some you know, landscapes with, uh, with buildings or something like that, you, you might consider selecting this. But I would say, first of all, just go ahead and use the auto option and see how that goes. Okay, so again, I fast forwarded through. And you can see how it's rotated some of the images a little bit and it's moved them around so if I just kind of click through you can see that it does a pretty good job this particular image as I, I go through and look at them again I'm not sure that that's really necessary you can see that it's relatively distorted it's spread out a little bit compared to the other ones and so in this case I'm going to turn this layer off I don't think it's going to be particularly helpful for us and you can see you know, the little petals are moving again it was a windy day so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the top of the pile so it's out of the way and then shift click just the other layers I want to use and then edit and then I want to do auto blend layers so as you can see auto blend layers can also be used to make panoramas in Photoshop we're stacking images here and really the key is to make an overall image that has a higher depth of field we're still going to have very blurry background that so that so that's perfect for for this particular image but we're going to have more of the flower in focus in the final composite turning on the content aware fill is something if we wanted to make sure all these transparent areas were filled would be one thing I'm going to crop in on the final result so it's not really that important for the image. The only thing that's important to really understand here is that once it's done it's going to make a composite layer on the top rather than just all of the, the individual layers with layer masks. Either way is fine. This, this saves a little bit of file size and a little bit of time by keeping this unchecked if you don't need it. Okay, so I fast forwarded while it was doing the processing. Again, had I used the content aware there would be a composite layer on top of this. If you decide that that's a useful thing, then you can, while these are selected, do Control Shift Alt and E, and you get the same overall result. What you can see is that it blended the layers down here very well. It primarily uses the Spot Healing Brush series of tools in order to do that, and by and large, it does a very nice job of it. But you can see it also did introduce a few artifacts. And again, it was a win windy day, and so we, we had a few areas where the petals were moving. And so that's what causes this kind of thing. So we can, we can just clone those out pretty simply. I'll show you the final result in the end. However, you can see now we have an area where the petals are in focus, as well as the, the center part of the image. We also have much nicer detail here in the flower that is related to it. 
Let me know if you have any questions. This is a very useful technique. And I think if you, especially if you shoot macro, is one that you're going to want to use again and again.